everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Magical Jill and this is Luna. Hi Luna. She's my new kitten and she is so sweet. And I don't know where Cosmo is right now but he's doing something. Luna likes to sniff the microphone and she likes to walk around. Ask, I ask the audience if they want you to be reviewed on the channel. Ask them. Ask them. Please review me on the channel. And also my husband's here today. Hello husband. I like the idea that I don't answer and just the voices in your head answer back. But hello, I am here. How are you? Then who would have set up the video? Well, that's a good question. I think I, I did a lot to set up the background today. We are reviewing Morrigan today. She's from the Darkstalkers series. It uh, was an old arcade sort of fighting game, kind of like Street Fighter. And then they have a lot of the games ported to consoles now. And she's one of the uh, most classic characters from the Darkstalkers series. She actually ended up being the mascot for them. This is a Koto Bukaya Bishoujo statue. So I thought that that was really cool. And this is Cosmo. Hi, who Cosmo. Who wanted to join in on the video. If you hear running, it's Luna running back and forth. Hi, my name's Cosmo and I am adorable. Aww. I love my kittens. They love you too. I should do a video reviewing my kittens. You absolutely should. But yeah, no, so this is by Capcom too. You mentioned Street Fighter. Yes. Capcom made Street Fighter. They made Darkstalkers. This was a game series that was very, very, make sure you show the side art too. It's very pretty. But this was a game series that was very unique, right? Because up to this point, like a lot of people have pointed out, fighting games, they were mainly these characters that were like stereotypical buff dudes and, um, you know, some girls too, but they were martial artists. This was a fighting game series about monsters. And so, she is a succubus. Yeah. And if you don't know what a succubus is, it is basically a seductive demon uh, who, you know, wants to kind of... Do the naughty naughty with... Yes, and and pe get, take people's souls pretty much in, I think that in this, interesting ways. This scene with some straight up dialogue from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite between her and Ghost Rider will kind of tell you a little bit about her personality. Play the footage. Tell me, Ryder. Is it business that brings you here? Or pleasure? Vengeance. Ah, a bit of both. A million innocent souls have been stolen from the Earth. I seek vengeance against the one responsible. Then look into my eyes. What do you see? <sighs> you are guilty of many things, Succubus, but not of this. Oh, I sense such desire in you. A fire. For justice. For retribution. Not for me. Or for me. <laughs> oh. No. A pity. We have so much in common. Our passion, great bone structure. But if you will not give me what I need, I will take it from you. So this is the first statue review I've ever done on my channel, and I hope to do more in the future because I'm really into video games and anime, and I have a lot of Sailor Moon figures I actually wanted to review on the channel, and I'm going to be getting some more figures too at some point in the future, but this is my very first statue I'm going to be talking about, and she looks absolutely awesome. I can't wait to take her out of the box and talk about her more with all of you. If you like this video and you like my statue reviews, please like and subscribe and let me know if you've ever played Darkstalkers in the comments. Why, she's gorgeous. Isn't she? Yeah, I love her. So she is a succubus, which means she's supposed to look seductive and beautiful, and obviously like a demon. Hide your buses. And something very interesting about her is she is one of the last of her kind in her continuity, and she was adopted by this guy who owns pretty much the demon realm of her continuity, and she's set to kind of take it over once he dies and stuff like that, and she is extremely powerful. Uh, so much so that only 1% of her power could destroy Shaggy. That's a uh, bit much. <laughs> Not much, but it's okay. But she has to do th uh, lots of things in her games, like try to regain her power, and she 
ends up meeting some people who aren't too fond of her along the way, hence the fighting. And honestly, I think she's really good at fighting, of you know. Worth noting that she seems like she'd be very good at being a succubus, too. I, I don't think I'd complain from a visit from her. She's also been retconned a little bit back and forth. There's so many comics, there's, you know, the anime, there is also all these games and different continuities. In some, she's more of a villain. In some, she's more of a heroine. It really just depends. It seems like the more popular interpretation of her leans more towards anti-hero. I think you we're going to talk about that just a tiny bit. Yeah, so in the original continuity, she's actually supposed to be pretty good. She really only feeds on people's dreams because the land that she comes from, that she was adopted into, it, the succubus there don't kill people. They just kind of feed on their dreams and such like that, and she can gain power from kissing people rather than, you know, straight up just killing them. And there's other continuities where she pretty much does just kind of straight up kill people. But I kind of thought the original one was more interesting because it's not as easy as that, if that makes sense. And she has to go through a lot of hoops to keep regaining her power over time. Yeah, I thought she seemed more three dimensional in the whole, you know, dream continuity. She also seems very kind and she even goes as far as to forgive and um, help out a girl who is also a succubus in her continuity. Lilith. Yes. The other part of her power. And it's actually really sweet and cute, especially when they kind of hug each other. And it's kind of weird, but she sucks her into her body and then they become one person. So basically we're looking probably at Morgan and Lilith right now. So take a good look. You'll see two women if you look closely. <laughs> Here, look closely. Here's woman number one and woman number two. <laughs> So honestly, I think she looks almost exactly like she does in the game, only, you know, not 2D. <laughs> she has gorgeous wings. I'm really surprised on how detailed they are and how detailed this entire figure is because I've bought other figures before, not necessarily from this company, but like just other figures in general. And usually they're a lot less high quality than they look in the pictures and it always disappoints me. But this one I am not disappointed by. She looks really, really good. I think the shading is nice. They probably could have put a little bit more shading on places on her body and blushing, but you know, Painting, I guess, costs a lot of money these days. They didn't shy away from the sexuality aspect of the character, which I think is interesting, but they also did it tastefully, mm -hmm. which I thought was well done. And I think that her color palette matches her default color palette in the games pretty well. Yeah, and she has her exact outfit that she always wears, and she has kind of this taunting, cute, seductive face going on. And it very much so fits who she is. She's very playful and fun. And I just think that she is really well done. Even her fingers are well painted. Like, a lot of times when you buy things like dolls, um, if they have painted fingernails, a lot of times the fingernail paint will be on the fingers or like down the fingers and there's nothing you can really do about it. This one, it doesn't have that at all. Like, it seems like it was really well quality controlled and like they actually tried their best to give you what you paid for which i think is really awesome and the sculpt looks very realistic koto bukaya is kind of known for that even though and i hope i said the name right this is our first product from them but i haven't really heard many complaints they're known for high quality sculpts and you can even see that it almost looks like the hair is flowing in the wind it does look like the hair is flowing in the wind it looks really beautiful and i love that you can like actually reach out and touch her tongue and her fangs and her nose and like she has these beautiful anime eyes and you can feel her clothing and like the wrinkles in the clothing it's actually really cool and really detailed and there's even like kind of an ombre effect of like a darker black going into a dark purple on her wings it's really impressive for a figure what do you think about the stand by the way i thought you'd really connect with the stand colors it seems very pastel and you i love it actually because it kind of reminds me of her standing on some sort of volcano or something in the demon realm mm -hmm. i thought it was really cool looks like it's actually so it's pretty um reasonable it ranges from 120 us dollars to 140 us dollars but there's also a lot of listings of it out of box for 60 on ebay that sounds expensive but it's actually pretty good pricing for something of this quality and something of this scale especially because a lot of times when you buy statues you think 
that they're gonna be bigger when they show up and then sometimes they're a lot smaller than you expected them to be and it's like really i paid 60 bucks for like a two inch figure mm -hmm. what and it's like well i guess i should have read the description but this it is pretty much the size of like a monster high doll i'd say this is about 11 12 ish inches maybe a little bit more and it's really, really well done. I'm really happy to have this in my collection. It's one of the most beautiful figures that I have ever owned. And I do own a, a couple of figures at this point. <laughs> and can I mention too that with this, you know, I think we can mention this probably in any statue or PVC figure review or any of those. You can see the difference in detail. What you pay is what you get. And one thing that's cool about Kota Bukaya is that what you're paying is not insanely high. However, there are sacrifices that have to be made with anything like this because there is no posability. That's mm -hmm. just the nature of a statue. Mm -hmm. So with Monster High dolls or any kind of dolls, it's just, you know, you buy it and you know that you'll see the joints, but you can put it into whatever pose you want. So sometimes you use clothes to cover the joints, stuff like that. This is just a static pose, obviously. It is what it is. But because of that, I think sometimes these things will look more realistic because you look at the knees, there are no joints because you don't need the knees to move. So it's, it's kind of a, a trade, you know, give and take. Yeah, that's the nature of statues. And one of the things that I'm not a huge fan on on some statues is sometimes there will be pieces to kind of keep the statue standing um, easily, if that makes sense. Like, a lot of times, statues will come in different pieces and you'll have to kind of put it together. Like, with my Sailor Moon, I had to put her pigtails on. And sometimes they'll come with, like, a block that goes on their shoe for them to stand with so they're, like, balanced. Or, like, sometimes they'll have a pole kind of coming from their butt that's clear. She doesn't have any of that. She's just right on this stand. And her heels have this little bit of clear part in between them that you can't even really see. So it just looks like it's a part of the heel. And I love that there's nothing kind of distracting from the figure. There's no like block on her shoe to make her stand correctly. There's no poles or anything. Like she's just weighted correctly. Mm -hmm. And the way she's standing is fine. You can put her on a shelf and not worry about her falling. Well, and not to detract from Amiibos, but this is kind of what you're talking about where there's a lot of figures that will need some plastic piece on them to just kind of they try and blend them into the figure sometimes sometimes they don't but it'll be to hold it together yeah but sometimes it's just really distracting looking yeah that's kind of how i feel a lot of times is they don't usually do like the best job with it um but it seems like this company does because all of the statues that i've seen online of them seem like they're really well done and i'd like to buy more in the future and talk about more of them in my channel because this one especially is is really gorgeous and i just love that you don't see any supports on her she's in this gorgeous pose you can just put her on your shelf and like she's not like a funko pop where she's just gonna fall over and possibly break it's really awesome and i just love the scale and the fact that her wings kind of just come out like she's not a compact figure she is fully there you know fully posed and she's not afraid to be there and i guess that's something that makes me happy is like she's ready to take up space on your shelf and she's not afraid of it and the pose isn't stupid yes I think yes that's one of the biggest things you've told me about statues that bothers you is if you don't like the static pose on a doll you can change it yes if you don't like the static pose on a statue it just ruins the entire piece for you and you don't want to buy it right. this one i love i absolutely love it I didn't actually know we were buying it at the time and then you told me oh yeah I got this and I was like oh okay cool and then it showed up and I was like this is awesome this is the best thing ever and I was so excited to talk about it on my channel so I'm really glad that we got this and I can't wait to just kind of show it to people and have it on my shelf because I'm a big fan of video games I especially really like these sorts of fighting games even though I'm not really good at them honestly I'm probably more of the type of person to watch them or like listen to the lore about them and be like wow that's a really cool story too bad I'm not good at it I to throw my last thoughts in there I think it's beautiful I love it one of the coolest things about Darkstalkers was it's from that 2D age of sprite graphics where everything looks hand-drawn. That is and one of my favorite types of graphics. It's it's so pretty and so beautiful. And this is a character that translates super well to 3D as well. So it's mm -hmm. really nice to have that version of her. I think Cosmo wanted to help you say goodbye to everybody. 
Cosmo wants to say, could you please check out my shop, EnchantedGlamour.com? It is so cool. I sell lots of awesome things on there. Well, I mean, not me, my owner. My owner sells lots of cool things on there. He owns you. <laughs> like jewelry and resin pieces. And I'm going to come out with a Christmas collection soon that I helped with, didn't you, baby boy? He knocked over all my beads the other day, which means he helped. So he wants you all to subscribe, especially if you want to see this adorable little face again. And I hope you all really enjoyed this video and leave it a like and maybe leave me a nice comment and tell me what you think of this figure and if you like Darkstalkers or not, because I hope to do more video game stuff in the future. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Bye! Like and subscribe! Look at him, he's so cute! Cosmo! 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 Look at my boy. baby! Hello! Hi baby! <laughs>